It's 1 38 a.m. May 25th, 2021. I woke up having these dreams, was woken up. And then shortly after I was woken up, I started to notice that I was getting directed energy weapon attacks to my lungs. Being made to cough. I'm also experiencing a lot of um, aches, body aches, but I just, um, I got a second shot yesterday, but I don't know what's from what. I know that my cough is from a directed energy weapons because it's been going on so long that I recognize it. But it's one of these instances where if you have something unfamiliar, you just you're going to attribute it to some other cause, even though it could be directed energy weapons. That's what happened to Chris. You know, he thought he was suffering from cancer, but actually he was suffering from directed energy weapons attacks. He just didn't know the difference, and I think that's probably been done to quite a few people with COVID and things like that. Anyway, it's just an observation of what's going on. <clears throat> um, so 9.35 p.m. last night, I saw the number five, fell asleep, and then the name AstraZeneca came to me once again, so that name has been coming to me a lot. And names come to me in such a way that I understood that this company was involved in the murder attack on Chris, the attack to his gallbladder, I guess, that attack. He's apparently been suffering a varied variety of attacks. Um, so I've been getting these dreams, but they're kind of muddied. Um, something, something injure, and then it's messenger. Idea of a prostitute versus a legitimate messenger. So I guess that means a prostitute, somebody who'll just say what they're you know, somebody gives them some money. Okay, say this, which is going around us around constantly. I mean, that happens constantly. That's more. I would say, if people are reporting on us, it's more common that it's people reporting fiction than people re reporting truth because there's a lot of money being paid to report fiction, and there's tons of cars again, new cars with dealer plates, like to the point where you'll see like them lined up practically. You know, you'll go to an intersection and it'll be like one after the other cars brand new larger nice cars with dealer plates I, I wasn't photographed you know it's just it's getting too depressing what good does it do anyway I've taken lots of photographs of them it's not like people don't know this is going on by this I mean these cars are not these cars and these aren't people just to some reason, everybody's out there buying a car for something else is attached to it, right? AstraZeneca, a new partner. I don't know what that means. It was just a phrase that came to me. Either they have a new partner or they are a new partner. Then I get a memory come to me of um, taking my daughter, Brooke, to the county clinic. It was mid-county clinic on division where she used to go as a child to see the doctor because of her stomach issues, vomiting, etc. as a child. So she was given these really traumatic <sighs> vomiting issues and stomach problems and everything like that going back to grade school. And I now understand is it was an attack. She must have had impl she must have implants in her digestive system. Also, and then I get the idea of Chris in his last days, and this is not anything that actually happened, but this in this scene, he's waiting for a transplant, and I'm trying to help him. I'm trying to get him on a transplant list. I'm trying to get to where he's up to next in line, so he only has a few days left. You know, but if he gets a transplant, he'll be okay kind of scenario. And I'm holding something external. Um, I say like a gallbladder, something in a bag. So some, like I said, I'm holding a bag of something external from him. Um, I feel like this is kind of muddied up, but something attached to him. But, you know, I'm trying to follow these instructions having to do with taking care of him, trying to get him a last-minute transplant. Um, 
you know, this mural appeared across the street from us before his diagnosis, just a few weeks before his diagnosis, where it says, but I'm never coming home on it. And I just kind of, I just realized yesterday a lot of people knew his situation before he did. That means the doctors knew it before he did, and they just, I mean, it was kept from him. And then once he, he did learn, then he was attacked worse and worse. He was attacked, I guess he was attacked. He must have been attacked the whole time. I think because he got so, he'd have so many problems at night, which is usually when they hit you with these weapons. Um, and then yesterday, by the way, I was walking past this closed bar I've talked about before that I think is next to the cannabis shop that I know direct, does directed energy attacks called the Urban Pharmacy. And it was this bar called O'Neill's. And outside of O'Neill's was a, there was this broken purplish plastic. And I think that's been there for a little while. And then a black COVID mask. And then on top of the black COVID mask was a Newport cigarette package. I see a lot of Newport cigarette packages out and I don't ever see people smoking, much less smoking. I feel like Newport is not a common cigarette that people smoke, but I don't know. But the Newport package has a swoosh on it that looks like a Nike swoosh. But my mom was also born in Newport, Oregon. I'd been talking about that recently. Um, but the coughing experiences that I'm having, I'm now understanding, this is meant to twin me to my Aunt Mildred, who was murdered with tuberculosis. Um, obviously, they would raise a flag if I, caught, I couldn't catch tuberculosis. I've got it inoculated against it and everything, and it's not a common disease anymore. But, you know, they're going to try to get me with something else, like to my lungs. Um, so the COVID mask and the cigarettes both indicate lung issues. This was right outside of O'Neill's pub. So once again, I wonder if maybe something's going on from that building because it's an abandoned building. I mean, not abandoned, but it's an unoccupied bar that's about a block away from here. Aretha Franklin songs say a little prayer is coming to me. I mentioned that song yesterday being linked to Madonna's Like a Prayer. I don't really know that all the lyrics to that song. It's mostly what's coming to me is the idea of that, you know, when I wake up and put on my makeup, I say a little prayer for you. Idea of Chris being roasted. This is the double meaning of roasted, right? He was, you know... It's like I was talking yesterday about they were trying to make me think that, I mean, even though it was stupid because it's so beyond what a hazing would be, but they're trying to make me think that I was being initiated or hazed or things like that, roasted. It's just, um, no, they've actually been trying to kill us. The phrase Banana Republic came into my mind. The name S.E. Hinton came into my mind. Pony Boy, Pony. I think that's one of the characters from S.E. Hinton book called The Outsiders. And I haven't read that since high school, but that's my memory. Okay. More stuff with Chris. Then I'm getting like this, I'm like hearing like phrases like no Garrett something, number children. And it's like three children or eight children. And then there's word, something about the word weight. But then there's this idea of leaving the eye out of weight, and it's white. And then that kind of links to the phrase, move weight in Hoboken, which is from Nicki Minaj song from 2009. I think it's from 2009, called Bees Trap, or Bees in the Trap. Um, I think the actual phrase in the song is live in the south but move weight in Hoboken um, then the phrase six children comes to me then the name Gucci Mane comes to me I'm totally out of left field artist I know that's a um, hip hop artist I'm not really familiar with his, him 
memory of being okay so then now another memory comes to me and this one is interesting um it links with something i was talking about yesterday memory of being in the part of town around the dentist so this is the dentist that i was trying to get to you know initially i was trying to get them to replace the crown in my mouth with one that didn't wasn't implanted and um, I ended up having to have the tooth extracted, but so this would have been late 2019 when I was trying to do this. And this is a specific trip up there where I was, I decided to eat a burger at Carl's Jr. I think it was fast food restaurants in that area. And I realized that this was the day where I had this bizarre experience linked to Eric Holder. So I had talked yesterday, I talked about the Nipsey Hussle murder and the fact that he was shot by a man named Eric Holder on, I believe it was March 31st, 2019, two days after my birthday, after my 51st birthday. And that, you know, I knew, I mean, I, I've known ever since it happened that it was a mind-controlled situation but what happened this day is i had had a dream the night before about a bike and a holder on the handles of the bike so there's the word handle like handler and holder um and in that dream it was another memory from about 1980 six or 87, probably 87 of me riding my bike out, um, from Arcata towards Blue Lake along, I believe it was along West End Road with my dad and, you know, Mike Payne, who I was going out with at the time, since about 18 years old. And we're out in the sort of, you know, rural area, and all of a sudden, I just lost all energy. Kind of like what happened to Chris, but not nearly as extreme. And Chris, all of a sudden, you know, he gets up, walks himself to the toilet, sits down, then tries to get off the toilet, and he just collapses. He, he doesn't even get off the toilet. He just, he can't get off. He can't move. From that point on, he can't move his arms or support his weight at all with his arms or his legs. He couldn't even crawl. He couldn't even crawl. Um, well, what happened to me is suddenly I couldn't ride my bike anymore. You know, I mean, I could move, I could walk, I could stand, but I couldn't, I had no energy and no strength to ride my bike anymore. So what they told me is this is something that happens to cyclists. It's called bonking and, um, that I needed to get some sort of calories in me. And so somebody rode to a store to get me, I think seven up or something like that. I'm going to do, I'm going to talk more, I'm going to go review this one because <clears throat> I had that memory and then I went to the dentist and all this stuff and I did all this stuff throughout the day. And then at the very end of the day, I ran into a guy with a bike with a holder, a cup holder. And it was just, just it, was, it was just weird. I just knew that I was, I had been brought, even though I had done all this random stuff. I'd gone to Trader Joe's. I did a lot of out of the ordinary stuff. Um, nothing planned out. Just my my route was just kind of, I'm going to go here now, and I'm going to go here, and I'm going to go here. And I had had this dream, and then I had been brought at the very end of the day, right as I was almost home, together with somebody who had a bike that matched something in my dream. And I met this person in an elevator, and I never take the elevator. So, um, I was pretty astounded by that. So what I realized, I, I don't know if I realized this at the time, because I don't even remember when this was, but that this was a match with... What I've been saying, I mean... It, <clears throat> I mean, I don't know what people... Since I never, almost re never get genuine feedback at all like from human beings about what they believe about what I say, what they have doubts about, about what I say, what they need more support for and things like that. I don't really know what's being understood. 
and what needs more um, support. But this idea that people can be brought together, you know, and it seems like it's random, but it's not. It's been completely controlled from an external source. It might be a little hard to swallow if you haven't experienced it. Um, but it's key to these mind control incidents like the, you know, the murder of Nipsey Hussle. You know, to have him just step out right at the right time and have the other person arrive right at the right time or the, have the, the incident occur in, you know, a certain sequence. That this can be so, you know, or, or say the George Floyd murder, the number of seconds, you know, or what time of day something happens, all that kind of stuff that it could be so precisely timed. I'm going to go back to that, I think. I'm going to see. I'm going to find that. That's published somewhere else. Then, <clears throat> this is a second. This came to me before the idea of Lin Manuel Noriega. So, Manuel Noriega was the Panamanian dictator in the 80s. Why? And Lin Manuel, was it Miranda? Is the guy who wrote the Hamilton um, musical. Lynn Manuel Miranda, I think is his last name. So I don't know I don't know what's going on with that. However, Noriega is an interesting character because he's somebody the United States supported for some time and then decided they weren't gonna support him. I think that's my memory of him. I don't know. I don't I have no idea why this came to me like this. Um, so that's that's what was coming to me. Um, I'm having a hard time with the way Chris was treated. And somebody would be treated so badly.